Hey strong people, Kale Beck here from StartingStrongMan.com. Go to StartingStrongMan.com for all of your news and information about training and everything you need for the sport of strongman and everything you need to buy for the sport of strongman at store.startingstrongman.com. Today I'm going to be breaking down and doing a little preview on a big contest uh, in the world of strong women, strongest woman in the world. It is put on by Strongman Corporation. This contest has more invites for the Arnold Pro Strong Woman than any other contest. I think there's six total with the top two in each division all getting an invite to the Arnold Pro, which is has the most prize money, I think, in all of uh, professional strong women. Uh, which I think this will be the fourth year for the Arnold Pro, and I think this this will be the fourth strongest woman in the world. Uh, so it's taking place up in Alaska at the Alaska State Fair. So state fairs are a pretty good uh, app venue for strong women strongman competitions, and you know there's a built-in crowd, all that stuff. There's a local state, there's a mid-state fair here. My friend Andrew Wickham puts on and always has a big crowd. They put them up on the stadium. So it's a good venue. It is all the way up in Alaska. And I'm going to go through the events. So there's a keg press medley. Uh, you have to do three reps with one keg, two reps with another, and then one rep with another. With another, It's pretty heavy. I think I couldn't find the event weights off the, you know, really quick in the time limit I had to before I did this video. But I am training one of the competitors for this, and in the open weight, heavyweight class, I think it goes up to 230 pounds. So that's a pretty heavy keg to press. Kegs are a little more technical of an event. So, yeah, it's just, uh, they're interesting events. But, yeah, keg press, not a real press, uh, but, you know, it does help to have better pressing strength. It's just so much technique and not bobbling it and making sure you have the weights kind of even in the kegs. Uh, then it goes on to a truck push in a dog sled pull, which I think is a backwards sled drag. Um, then they do an axle deadlift, which is going to be standard height, and the open weight class is 460-ish uh, pounds, I think. Then the event of all events, the 50-pound salmon toss. So at this contest... Not, not, it hasn't been strongest woman in the world, but this contest that takes place at the Alaska State Fair every year, they have this giant rubber salmon, and it weighs 50 pounds, and it's been used in every contest in various ways. It's been thrown for distance, it's been thrown for height, and these strong women get to, they have to two-hand toss it like a shot put. So... That is an interesting event. I don't think it's going to be very... It's not the best way to determine who goes to the Arnold Pro. Uh, just because I know events like this, it always ends up being like the luck of who ends up getting an inch or so further. Uh, but it'll be interesting. Then there's a keg carrying load, which I will be shocked if any of the open weight women finish it. It is like six kegs and they're all like 60 feet away and it's pretty heavy. There is a similar event at the first strongest woman in the world. And, uh, I don't think anyone finished it there. I don't, I don't know what the weights are for the lighter weight classes, but it's going to be a, a extremely brutal event. Then I guess in case of a tiebreaker, there's a Viking press. I think the salmon toss would be a better tiebreaker event. Viking press would have been good in the whole show. Hopefully they let them do it in the whole show. I think it would be better, just one more traditional event. Now let's go on to the athletes competing. Uh, there's It's pretty low in the overall athletes. To compete, you have to have a Strongman Corporation pro card and those are harder and harder to get with pretty much the only way to get them is at nationals or at uh the the arnold amateur um so it's just not really bolstering i don't think there's enough of, of the ranks they're not building up enough people to then compete and i'm gonna get into that a little later i'm getting sidetracked so we have let's see we have corey butler uh who is a heavyweight competitor. We have Christina 
Bangma, a lightweight competitor. She's won the Arnold and pretty much everything else. A couple, you know, in the past couple of years. Sarah Cogswell, who is a middleweight. Uh, Bailey Duchesne, who's a middleweight. Joel Pecky, who is in the lightweights. Brooke. <sighs> Brooke Sousa, who won it last year in the heavyweights. Sorry, it's kind of mixed up in here. Emile Morin, who is a heavyweight out of Canada. Jessica Fithin, my client, who's a heavyweight out of uh, Indiana. Daniel Vehi out of Texas, who's in the middleweights and I think has already qualified for the Arnold pro by winning uh, the Arnold Amateur last year. Jackie Ozerkowski out of Canada, who's in uh, the heavyweights. Jessica Kite, lightweight competitor. Laura Anderson, lightweight competitor. And I think Jessica Theaker is also competing because Brooke Seuss is down here twice, who is a another lightweight competitor. So we have one, two, three, I think five, five heavyweights competing for two spots in the Arnold. We have three middleweights with one who is already qualified. So I, th I guess just by showing up, um, I, I would assume that makes you get a spot for the Arnold Pro. And one, two, three, four, four lightweights uh but going through the competitors when you go through the events i think a, a meal of canada has a really good de deadlift um brooke sousa is pretty well rounded overall very fast at moving events um not too familiar jessica fithin's very very good presser and is improving in in everything you know it's just there's there's such weird events I think it's really going to come down in all of these classes to who can execute on the kegs correctly. It's not necessarily who's the best presser on those events. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's who has the technique down the best and has practiced them. And who has their conditioning up a ton. Because I know looking at these events, a lot of people are going to be how people tend to train. They focus on like the axle deadlift, uh, which is fairly heavy. Uh, but... You could you make just as many points in the truck push, the dog sled pull, the the salmon toss as you do for deadlifting 460 pounds for reps. That's just how strongman contests go. And you could get you know six inches less than someone in that salmon toss and uh, fall five points and get you know one rep less than someone in a deadlift and only lose a point. It's going to be a very interesting. It's going to be interesting contest. There's such odd events. Um, there's not a huge amount of competitors where the points can swing a ton either way. So people just need to stay consistent and not make mistakes like any contest, but even more so uh, with, you know, such, you know, big, long uh, keg carry medleys, um, a salmon toss and, uh, you know, a, a push and a pull event along with a keg, which isn't a standard event, uh, you know, and then they're going to end up winning. Um, I think I, I'm just trying to, cause it is, this is a pretty big contest for strong women. And there's only what less than 15 competitors total. And I try to think on how, why that is it's qualifying for one of the biggest shows, but I think the problem with the Arnold pro uh, and it's went on for four years now, and I've said it before, and I don't mean this as any disrespect to any of the lighter competitors, is that if you're doing a pro Arnold and you're making it as heavy as it is, it needs to just be an open weight contest. Whoever is the strongest goes there. I'm not saying lightweight shouldn't go, middleweight shouldn't go, but it should just be an open weight to go just like the men do. And I think if it was like that, it would incentivize more people to go because I feel, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's pretty costly to go all the way up to Alaska. And I feel like a lot of the lightweights and stuff, they go, what's the, you know, what's the point of then going to the Arnold pro? Um, 
and some have won events there, but you know, overall, who ends up winning it every year has been, you know, a, a heavyweight or a middleweight competitor, um, and that's just that's just the facts. Uh, I'm not, as competing as a lightweight male, going to qualify for the Arnold Pro Strongman contest and compete against Half Thor and Martins and Brian Shaw and stuff. That's people would think that's silly. But that is exactly how the Arnold Pro Strongman is set up. And I think if they could just try to mirror more of the approach to the Arnold men, and I think it's great that there is a Arnold Pro Strongman show and everything. Um, and it's a huge step forward and we're getting this new arena. There's this whole Strongman area with an arena seating and there's gonna be more emphasis on Strongman and Strongwoman at the 2020 Arnold Classic uh, in Columbus, Ohio. But this will be going into the fourth year of the Arnold Pro. They've done mixed weight classes this whole time. And I think it's time to treat the strong woman portion uh, the same as the men and make it a little more less, a little easier to qualify for. Not easier, but more straightforward. They have a series where if you go to any Arnold and you win the open weight class at the Arnold, um, you qualify for the Arnold Pro. And I think if there'd be a lot more incentive uh, you know, for women and to be more global, we're basically looking at this competitors list. It's America versus Canada. It's not a global event uh, in that way. And it's strongest woman in the world. You get more international comp competition because there'd be a way to qualify in Australia. There'd be a way to qualify in South Africa. And there has been ways to qualify there, but it's like this one class is this. It should be the open, whoever wins the open weight class wins and middleweights can compete in it. Lightweights can compete in it. They want, you don't have to weigh over a certain amount to compete in the open. There's lighter guys um, that compete in the Arnold Pro that are, you know, Anthony Furman is a 105 kilo competitor uh, and he's competing in the Arnold Spain coming up to try to qualify for the for the Arnold Pro in the men's side. Um, and he's competing against the open. And, the, you know, the thing is, is he strong enough to do that? And that is how this will grow and uh, be a little more, more you know, more legitimized and the strongest woman in the world will uh, grow too, because I think, you know, just two spots, um, the biggest class is heavyweight because they're probably the most uh, eager to compete at the Arnold Pro because it's a heavy contest and that's who ends up winning. Uh, Donna Moore and Andrea Thompson, I have heard are both competing at the Arnold Spain, which has one qualifying spot um, to go to the Arnold Pro. So that's going to be a battle. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts. I think it just, it needs, you know, that it was a big step forward getting Arnold Pro Strongwoman at the Arnold. This Ar this uh, Strongman area and arena is a big step forward. Uh, the Arnold Strongman Corporation, everyone have been doing huge things for the sport of Strongman and getting it bigger. But to get to that next step, the women's side needs to more model the men's side and just be an open weight class in the Arnold Pro. More clear, have a point system just like the other one, uh, you know, just like the, the men's side. And I think if you do that, participation for each show will go up. There'll be something on the line for each show. Even if you don't win, you get points just like on the men's side. And it'll um, make sure that the competition is the absolute best in the world at the Arnold Pro strong women just like it is at the Arnold Pro strong men and it'll uh can, it'll make the sport of strong man strong women bigger and give it more legitimacy uh you know as it's, it's trying to get a, a foothold it's grown so much in the past five years but this is the next step and that's what I think needs to happen um looking forward to the results for a strongest woman in the world I would follow strongman corporation they'll probably be posting the most most of them I'll try to post what I can here and at Starting Strongman on uh, all social media and, of course, startingstrongman.com.